And one of the problems you tend to get is you put a waypoint here, and a waypoint here, and let's say a waypoint here. When you try to fly your plane, as we've been showing before, it gets to here, overshoots the waypoint, comes around in a big circle to here, overshoots this waypoint, and it keeps zigzagging back and forth. We would like to get it to do something much closer to directly going along the lines. So here is the solution I came up with for this problem. For one thing, I added an additional waypoint before the first one. It's sort of a, if you will, a phantom waypoint. <coughs> uh, when it flies, it will not attempt to hit this waypoint. This is really the first one. The only reason this exists is to provide a line of direction to know where it wants to go for the first waypoint. And what I, what the logic I am using is this. Let's say I know that this is the line I'd like to be on. This is the point I want to aim at. <coughs> and my ship is currently here. Well, if my ship is currently here, then that means that I can find this angle of how far off I am from the line I would like to be on. Because I have these three points. So if I am currently flying this way, by the time I get on the line, I've already hit the waypoint. What I'd really rather do is fly this way for a bit, trying to hit a point further back on the line, and as I start getting closer to it, and this angle starts getting less and less, I'd like to move this point further up to the actual aim point. The effect will be that the plane starts to follow this, and then starts to follow this, and then starts to follow this, and starts to follow that. <coughs> so as I was doing this, it seems to have worked quite well in my testing earlier today. So this new feature is in there. And another thing I put in there is there's now a abort and go around, which is actually the first thing I'm going to be showing. One of the problems I ran into is that if uh, I try to use a really big airplane, it tends to uh, overshoot the runway if I'm not careful. So I'm actually going to show the go-around feature first, so let's get started. I have created my own little big plane that I like for this purpose. Let's see, where is it in the list? Why is it not in the list? Well, there it is, the Tin Goose. <coughs> So the goal here was to take an airplane that was exceptionally large and unwieldy to get the script to work with this thing. So here we are. This thing that looks a bit like a Canada Goose-ish is going to be my first test craft. I don't quite have it to where it will automatically take off, but that's not really the goal of this thing to be, so here we go. <coughs> Oh, sorry about the voice. I will get this thing taking off. And actually, when I move the control surfaces, all those flaps in the back kind of remind me of like tail feathers on the bird. It's kind of neat. So I am just going to turn this thing around. Incidentally, this, this design is uh, pretty nifty looking, but it tends to be a bit fragile. If I pull up too hard, I can rip the wings off just from the G-Force. <coughs> so let's just fly it back really quickly to somewhere back here, and uh, I will use the dangerous physics warp. Okay, maybe I shouldn't have used Physics Warp. Dang it. <sighs> right. Well. So long, you two. As I was saying, uh, 
it's a little bit fragile. Um, <laughs> normally when I play the game for real, I don't use revert, uh, and I don't use sandbox mode, I actually have a career game. But for the purpose of testing out scripts and showing stuff, it's much easier to just use a very vanilla, easy sandbox to, to test things out. Maybe I can, uh, maybe I can tolerate that. So I'm just going down to somewhere downfield to where the script can start to take over after that. And this looks good enough. Oh, from last time. Let's quick save here, so if we have to do this again, it's not so bad. So here I bring up the terminal for the KOS mod. And let's run my script, which I'll be showing the details of my changes later, but for right now, let's just watch it. <coughs> so one of the changes I made is so that if the pitch is, or if the climb rate is way off from what it wanted, it goes into a panic mode, where it ignore, where it just sets it back to flat bank and tries to fix the, or tries to fix the pitch first before it goes back to actually doing the turn. So here's the turn it's attempting. That's the point it's temporarily aiming at along this red line, which I realize probably doesn't show up very well in the feed, but where it says waypoint line, there's a thin red line and the aim point is a spot along that line, and as I get closer to it, the aim point moves closer to the end. <coughs> yeah, the, the, the script automatically does the throttle control as well. That was already done last episode. And actually, I changed the throttle control to a PD controller instead of a PI controller, and it works way better. So as my angle to this spot gets closer, the aim point moves more up here. And you can see that in the display right here. This 29 degrees is the angle, if you back off here, between me, this point, and this point. As that gets smaller, the aim point moves closer and closer to the head. The effect being that my uh, ship curves nicely, just comes right in in line where I want it to be. I still didn't implement the idea of there being a big giant uh, plane here, a big giant wall that I go through to trigger the next waypoint. It's still based on the sphere around a radius. I could fix that, but the tricky part is, if I start the plane already past that wall over here, I don't want it to trigger thinking it already hit the waypoint, when what I really want it to do is come back here and start from over here. Because of the complication of, of fixing that, I didn't bother putting that in. But as you can see, the uh, steering is much, much cleaner than it was before. I'm getting it to, to come in much nicer. Now, if you look here, I've also made it so that to, to handle different aircraft designs, I can use the exaction group numbers to change what the script wants to try to land at. Now what I'm going to do here is, pressing 2, I'm going to up the landing speed to an absurd number that actually doesn't work. That's on purpose. I'm trying to make it fail. So I'm going to set a landing speed that's too high, deliberately, to, so you can watch the failure mode. I'm going to try to land, but it'll be going too fast, so that by the time it would come down, it would be too far down the runway. <coughs> so it comes in nicely, you can see the red is the intended glide slope. Slowly starting to pull up. Close enough to the ground to kick out the gear. It's coming in nicely. Will it pull up in time? Now it pulls up. And the problem is, it's going to pull up a bit much here because it's trying to go fast. 
faster than it should. And I'm deliberately doing that because I want to show a failure the first time. So it comes in, and watch the screen up here. Abort, go around, less than half of runway left. And what it's doing is checking its position versus Vassy East and Vassy West. When it gets closer to East than West, it goes, Nope, I'm not going to try and land, I've gone too far. Kicks the throttle up, adds a couple of additional waypoints, one up here and one over there, and uses those to go around and have a second pass. <coughs> And again, I am not touching any controls here. My hands are up here, and the only thing I'm doing is moving the camera. So, so far, this has gotten... this has become pretty good. I'm, I'm liking how this works. I also kind of like the look of the plane, too. It's kind of neat. These little... Uh, the rudder fins aiming down were meant to look like the sort of feet that sort of drag behind a, a bird in flight, one of these big birds that looks this way tends to have those draggy feet, which actually are part of the aerodynamics. They, op they act as basically the, the rudder and tail. <coughs> so what I'm going to do to alleviate a little boredom here is I'm going to use the action group here to up the cruising speed. Just to get it out there a little quicker, and then I'll bring it back down later. Uh, and I will lower the landing speed. I've discovered through experimentation this plane seems to like landing at about 70. But as you can see, the abort, I told it to go out here to a point that's not quite lined up with the runway. I put a point about 4 kilometers out from the line, and that's the first place it aims at. <coughs> for its uh, missed approach left turn pattern to get back into the traffic, traffic so to speak. Now I started this with the, can with the sun low in the sky because I wanted to see my shadow in front of me as I landed, but it looks like I started it a little too late in the, in the afternoon because that's going to go behind the mountains by the time we land. Okay, now I'm bringing back to a more sane cruising speed. <laughs> now it's attempting to go over here. This point here is in line with the runway over here. And as it gets closer, this will shift up towards the, the, the tip, causing it to, to start banking back as it starts getting closer to the line. When it gets within 500 meters of the point, then it starts to switch to the next one. So here you can see in the display the compass heading it's trying to aim for, where it actually is aimed right now, how it wants to try to bank based upon that, the vertical speed it wants. This part's a bit fiddly, the vertical speed bit. That's uh, its reaction on the pitch control and the throttle control spools up and is kind of slow. So sometimes the landings are a little unpredictable. in. Banking up nicely. Now it's finally slowing down more as it tries to hit this 70 upon landing. Now speed is currently down to 93. Still trying to make it lower. <coughs> Decided to hit the gear down when it got to a low enough altitude. Throttle 
signal's kicking in a bit because it's starting to slow down too much, but it immediately drops back a bit. It only needed to kick it in a little. Now it's on the final part, trying to flare it out to see if it can get the vertical speed down to 1.5 meters a second down. Here it comes. And... nice. Brakes are on. In fact, the script ends as soon as it touches down and puts the brakes on and just lets it go to a stop at that point. So because the touchdown occurred before the halfway point, it went ahead and accepted it. And as you can see up here, it did turn the brakes on, and they're slowing it down eventually. This is a very heavy craft. It takes time for it to finally slow to a landing. I have thought about the idea of making it actually able to measure its own performance. But, um, for now I'm pretty happy that I've got this much to work. warping into daylight again, so it looks nicer. And apparently because my engines were sitting at idle, I ran out of battery power for the uh, CPU. But uh, there you go. <coughs> Successful landing. Now it's time to start talking about the script code that actually does all of that. I realized when I went and read the stream last night that it's a little hard to see um, the text in the stream, so I decided to, to use an even bigger font for the window. Um, I normally really like having tiny letters so I can fit a lot on the screen at once, but that's really inappropriate for a, a live stream, so I'll go ahead and use them, the really huge font so you can all read it nicely. <laughs> So, I'm going to go over just the bits I changed, starting from top to bottom. The first thing I did that was important was the go-around feature. Um, the first thing is I made a little function that creates additional go-around points. Um, the intent bring up my scratch paper again. Uh, the intent here is that if if this is your runway, presumably it's making the go-around decision at some point when your airplane is currently on that runway near landing here. So all it does is use the plane's own orientation to find a point out here that's two kilometers away from where it currently is. Puts a waypoint there at altitude 300 plus the current runway altitude. So 300 above where it is now. Puts a waypoint there. Then going to the very back of the original runway landing waypoints out here taking the last most one, it aims four kilometers to the left of it. And it chooses left based again on the assumption that by the time it's making this decision, the current plane is lined up pretty good with the runway. So it just uses the current plane's own orientation to figure out which way is left. So in that left direction, four kilometers from the, most, from the, from the last most point, it adds a point there. So it puts this waypoint down and it puts this waypoint down, and then finally it puts a waypoint where the ship currently is. So what this should do for the uh, abort go-around is to find a path that when it aborts, it's going to go to here, then try to go to here, then here, and then reattempt the landing like it did the first time, which is what you just saw happen. The way I, I could have put uh, another point out here and had it turn it into a square pattern like real airports use, but the way I figured it, by the time this thing gets turned around, trying to reach this point, it's already going to be way out about there anyway. 
so it was just not worth bothering with it. So this thing called create go around points is the bit that does that. And if you remember, these points are actually a list that's numbered kind of backward. This right here is the zeroth point, the oneth, tooth, third, fourth, and fifth, which is really the sixth, of course, point. That's how they're numbered. So I'm going to be adding the sixth, the seventh, and then the current position is the eighth. And then from then on, I don't have to do anything but just let the regular code run the waypoint traveler. That'll automatically make it want to take off. <coughs> because this point is 300 meters up in the air, and I'm currently down near the runway, it'll automatically... And because I also set this to a high speed point, it goes, well, it needs to be high speed, it needs to be above me, I guess that means I need to pull up and kick in the throttle. Which, of course, if you're doing an abort go-around, is, is exactly what you want it to do. But in, So I didn't need any special logic other than just to insert the waypoints for it to follow to do the go-around. So the first thing it does is removes the last most fake point. Because as, you, as I mentioned before, you have this dotted line fake waypoint. When you first start, they're actually is a sort of a fake waypoint out there that it never actually tries to travel to that waypoint but it's there so it can figure out the direction of, of the first waypoint 5. So the first thing I do is, is ditch that and put it here instead. So old length is the length the lists used to have. Remove that last most item, old length minus one. Then insert point six here which is four kilometers to my left of the last most point. So old len minus two is the, the point that was left after you've deleted this one. So that's point five. From there, get the speed that was the speed uh, waypoint that was there, the altitude waypoint that was there, and to get its new geo position, convert the geo position to a XYZ position first, do a vector math with 4,000 times my starboard facing vector in the negative direction, so it's actually my port facing vector. Uh, vector tip to tail, add that on, and when you get that new pause, convert that new pause back into a geo position again and save it. That's the geo position there. Then you also need to insert way, this waypoint here, which is what this next one does. So find out what the speed was at this point, whatever that cruising speed was from the profile, and just double it. Um, and that'll be the target it's going to try to hit as it kicks in the throttle and pulls up. The altitude is... Oh, I'm done here. The altitude is my current altitude plus 300 meters more. And the position is to take my current position vector math 2,000 times whatever direction I'm currently facing, and uh, that'll be somewhere two kilometers-ish out in front of me. It doesn't really matter exactly where, because this is only just used to do the pull-up. Um, and then convert that back to a geo-coordinate and put it on. Then, uh, finally, the point where I currently am. So that does what this diagram shows, and inserts them in when this is called for. The, the one that goes with that is called Remove Go Around Points, which just says trim the list back down to its original six. Ignore all this stuff. Um, which is, if I do a go around more than once, I need to do this to make the second go around, not add all that stuff again two times. Let's see, other thing I changed my PID init's that used to be a big long list of them, I actually made each of them a function. So init pitch pid, init roll pid, init bank pid, init thread pid, uh, these all just, uh, just a simple one wrapper around the PID init. This doesn't seem to be worth doing, but there's a reason for it. The reason for it is, I initialize the PIDs at the front, but I want to reinitialize them to the very same thing later and to remember what the parameters actually were and not type the numbers in twice, I re-init them by calling this again.
incidentally, the place where I use that where it matters is that um, when I do, when you see this thing that says panic mode, ignoring compass, just leveling, at that point it, it tries to seek a bank of zero and tries to just pull up or push down depending on if it's climbing way too high or descending way too much gets that fixed first before it then goes back to carrying about the bank. It is because of that that I want to reset the PID parameters again, the initial values, so that it doesn't have a false notion with the integral windup, because it's been running for a lot of iterations in which I've been ignoring the output it told me to do. And if I've been ignoring the output it told me to do, it's going to get the false idea that I've been using the output it told me when I haven't, and it'll think that something about the design of the plane is trying really hard to turn left, and it's not turning left. Oh my gosh, I have to try to turn left even harder. And that integral windup is going to get messy. So to prevent the windup, I just reset the PID after I take care of the emergency. So that's why I wanted this to be in functions, so that I could reset it later without having to retype in the parameters. These are the action groups. Uh, this is a little hard coded, which I don't quite like, but it does work. Points 0, 1, and 2 are the points down on the runway. Point 0 is the final point. Uh, 1 is the point at the, f at the foot of the runway, and 2 is the point just a little bit ahead of the foot of the runway. So, AG1 reduces the landing speed, AG2 increases the landing speed. First it sets the landing speed, and then sets the other two based upon multipliers of the landing speed. So if I say I want the landing speed to be 90, then this will be 1.1 times 90, and then this will be 1.2 times 90 for the, the, the spots that lead up to it. And then finally the cruising speed is the waypoints that are out here, which I can adjust. This is a bit hard-coded what these numbers are. I would probably like to go in here and make this a little less hard-coded, that there's exactly that many waypoints along the way. But for the purposes of a landing script, this is fine. <coughs> and then finally, Action Group 5 turns off all of the vector drawing, so that you can watch it without any of, the, of that stuff, and just kind of cinematically watch it landing on its own, without seeing any of the math vectors. This bit doesn't work. Uh, I was trying to have it say, if you begin already landed, then go ahead and take off, and then it'll continue the rest of the thing. But for some reason, this was not detecting correctly. It would get to this line and then wait on this line forever, instead of stopping after I take off, and then it gets stuck on this line forever. I don't know why, but that's not really important. Um, that's not really part of landing. This is just if I start off with it already on the ground, I was trying to make it take itself off, but I never really got very far with that. And that's not important, I probably won't touch that much. This just talks about the action groups that I just mentioned. I now have two different vectors that I care about drawing, the aim line and the aim pause. Uh, the aim line is that big red line you were seeing. The aim pause is the yellow line that goes to some point along the red line, like this. I started using a bit more HUD texts to have things on the screen. I have a generic trigger for always deploying the gear when you're low and always retracting it when you're up. I did this so the go around would automatically retract gear for you. This is exactly the same thing as what's in that uh, initial starter script that was made for people who don't know how to use KOS to use. It's basically the exact same logic. Um, <coughs> And then back into the main loop. It's been changed up a little bit, but not much. I now use sea level altitude instead of ground level altitude, so it's smoother. Um, ah, yeah. If I'm starting at a point that's... If my current aiming I, current aim I is that number I was referring to, this 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 4, where I am in the waypoint list. If I am not at the very end of the list, then get the previous point as well, because we're going to do some math on it. And incidentally, I no longer started at the top of the list. I now started at, uh, let's see, where was it? It was somewhere up here. 
well, I started at the, at, the, at, the, at at one up from the end of the list. So if the list has items zero, one, two, three, four, five, I started at item four, not item five, so that item five can be my, be my previous point. So I get the previous aim geographic point, the previous aim altitude. Uh, I get the previous aim X Y Z position from those two. Get the current aim line position, which is the one I'm trying to get to now. The, the line between these two positions is going to be the aim line, the red line you saw. So here's where I work out some vector math to do that. The distance between me and the current aiming point, which is actually the distance between me and the, and the line aiming point, the tip of that vector, not the yellow one, the red one. Um, a unit vector backward in the direction from the tip of that vector back to, or to the tip of the red vector, back to its base. So it's basically the opposite of that. Um, and then I'll use that unit vector for some math. The angle of offset between the red line and the yellow line, which is what this is going to do for us. Get a fraction of how much of 60 degrees is that. I just picked 60 because it seemed to work okay. I fiddled with that number for a while until I got one that was good. So basically, fraction will be 1.0 when my angle is 60 degrees off. If my angle is 30 degrees off, fraction is a half. If my angle is 15 degrees off, fraction is a fourth, and so on. It's just a very fuzzy heuristic for how far off is my angle, which I then use to decide how far off my aim position should be. How far should it back up that red line? The amount that it should back up that red line is this fraction of the distance between me and the point in the backward direction. Okay, this requires drawing, because that's, that's really messy. in the actual same colors as what you saw on the thing. That'll probably make this a little easier. So if there's a red line there telling me I want to go that way. And my ship is currently here. And I have a yellow line, which isn't quite all the way to the point, which is here that I'm trying to go to then this is my current aim point and what was it called? Current aim line pause. I got better names for these I should come up with. This is that's the current aim line pause there. And this is of course the ship position. So the idea is, if I take this line here, get the angle between those two, which is what offset angle is, then the distance that I want this to be back, which is this distance here is this mess. So this is the distance to A. It's that scalar distance there. I want to make sure the aim point is never further back behind me than this distance. If the aim point ended up being back here, then it would cause my ship to actually turn around and go the wrong way, which I don't want it to be that bad. So worst case scenario is that the aim point comes all the way back to here. So this is the farthest back it could possibly get, or at least that's the premise. Or that's, I'm sorry, that's not the farthest back you could get. That's what a coefficient of 1 would do. It would say aim backward along the current line, a length equal to my distance. 
that's what it would do if I was as far off as 60 degrees, which that's really bad. If it's that if it's that far off, I actually want to do a go around and try again because it means things are really far off. So if it was 60 degrees, this would be all the way back here. If this was 30 degrees, aim point would end up being here. If it was 15 degrees, the aim point would end up being here, and so on. So as I get closer, because if I, as I follow the aim point, my ship moves. Now if my ship is here, I've got a new angle, which is smaller, and because it's smaller, it causes the aim point to shift up to here. And now I have an aim point like that. And this is how I basically end up causing it to perform this curve. That's that's the design of how that works. Most of this is dealing with setting all of that up. And I will be putting this um, on the Google Drive after the stream is over so you can, you can look through this in detail and see what I did. Um, for the most part, it's not worth doing all that math again because it's pretty much what I just showed you uh, uh, by hand. Um, if we are above the final aim point, if we're, if we're not quite at the end of the final runway run, um, run, then want climb is set to the get want climb that was what we were using before to figure out the climb rate to get to your aiming position. Whereas, if we're on the final leg, I switch to a new algorithm where I just simply try and go down at 1.5 meters a second downward, or if I'm really close to the ground, 0.5 meters a second, seeing if I can get it to do a final flare right at the very bottom. Um, usually for most of the craft I've been flying with, they're so slow to respond that this doesn't really come up. It, by the time it gets down to 5 meters a second, it doesn't have enough time to do this final pull-up, and it just comes right down. Um, some of the little tinier, more agile jets, this actually does matter, but it doesn't on like the big giant ones where it doesn't have enough time to do this reaction. This is the abort detect. If the east vessel position minus my current position's distance is less than the west vessel position minus my current position's distance, then I'm closer to the west or the east end than the west end, and it triggers into this. And notice it only does this if it's on the final waypoint. And this is the abort go around, which says remove any previous go around points that may have been left over from a previous run, make new ones, reset the index back to the end of that new list, and start following the rest of this loop again as you were before without any changes, and it should automatically take off, which you saw it do in the previous thing. And then the last change I did since last time was this is the panic mode where it tries to pull out of dives and climbs if it gets way too far off base. Um, oh, I suppose I should point out one thing I also changed. It's a very minor thing, but it helped. Is that if you look at my PID control parameters, you will notice that I decided my bank shouldn't be more than 45 degrees. I, it was getting too hard to make it behave sane when I had it banked more than that. So I, I, I put a more sane limit on the bank to make it behave much smoother and nicer. Um, so anyway, want bank is the desired bank that the PID controller comes out with. And if, if we're in an emergency situation, I'm going to override that and just say, I want a bank of zero, regardless of what the PID controller said. And it check, the check for that is if the difference between the desired climb rate and the actual vertical speed we have, taken as an absolute value, is more than 50 meters a second. We're more than 50 meters a second off from our intended rate of climb or descent. Then we are definitely climbing way too high or diving way too much, and then it goes into panic mode. Sets the want bank to zero, saying, I don't care what you think you should do with the wing wing wings, just level them. And then, uh, if it's the need PID reinit will be false if it's the first time it detected this, and therefore it pops the message on the screen and then sets it to true. Um, if this has become less than 50, it started to become normal again, then we can go ahead and start using the proper PID controller for want bank again. We can, we can set it back to what it needs to be properly again. So this is the PID reinit that 
turns all the pit controllers back to zeros again and starts them now that we've pulled out of our dive. Um, so that's how that works. So that is pretty much everything I have done, and I think it works fairly well. I'm going to close this off by uh, demonstrating the fact that it works on other models as well. I'm going to launch a different plane. You know, um, no one's sent a message in the chat for a while. I'm kind of wondering, uh, is my feed still going out? Did it, did it stop? Or are there just no one, just no one watching? Hmm. Well, I, I hope the feed is still going out. Well, anyway, um... Oh, okay, you're still there, good. Just needed to make sure. Um... Normally the, the, the chat had been more chatty in the past, and uh, so when it, when it wasn't quite so chatty, I was beginning to wonder. Alright, so let me go back to my old original machete. Remember this thing? Actually, I, I picked some of these out of stock. I think these may actually be left over from FAR, but uh, let's try one of these other ones. Um, Which one did I try this with? It was one of these military ones I tried that actually worked okay. Here we go. Someone claimed this thing looks like a MiG-21. I'm not sure I agree with that. Kinda looks vaguely like a MiG-21-ish. Um, I'll just use that as an example. I will put a computer on it. Uh, let me double check. And you'll notice this thing has the lift way in the back. And, uh, I mean, way in the back. I'm really surprised this worked at all. But, uh, it apparently did. Uh, HVAC NG, do you have a, uh, are you planning on showing off your stream today? Because you mentioned you might have wanted to do it. But, are you actually ready for that or not? Because if you just need a little bit a little bit longer, I can keep playing this out, streaming it for a while, you know, chatting and whatnot until you're ready. Um, if you, if you need someone to just kind of fill a bit of time. I had to turn the engines on to start charging the batteries, uh, or, the, or the computer wouldn't run. Back. If you're hoping to do your stream in a bit, I'll keep mine going a little bit longer. I'll just keep trying you with this with different planes and whatnot. And we'll see what happens. Oh, I still had my SAS on. That's why this wasn't turning very well. Holy cow! Back off that throttle. I didn't realize how much fuel this thing was eating through so quickly. Wow. Okay, so let's try flying the script from here. My PID gains for roll control were designed for the very large craft that are a bit slow, so when you do a really sleek fighter craft that transitions really fast from left to right, it does have a little bit of wobble on there still. But it, it does settle in. Settle in after a bit. 
Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to turn off the the, uh, the 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 vector draws because I think it would be interesting to just see what this looks like, see how well it flies without the visuals. I think it actually makes a kind of a nice cinematic experience. In fact, let's uh let's see the point of view from inside. Let's see what Sigrine Kerman is seeing. What does her life look like from in here? Again, I kind of wonder why I bother with, uh, you know, having these things be manned with astronauts. see the airport off the right wing. Here's where it's trying to move the waypoint slowly up towards the tip of the invisible red vector. Basically this is where it starts making its slow turn. Oh, uh, there is one thing I do have to do before we land. I'm not going to try and land a MiG-21 at 65. There. That's a little better. Okay. I had to slightly adjust the intended landing speed so that it doesn't stall out. Oh, that looks pretty sweet from here. I really like the detail that they've put that the that the that the developers put into all the artwork for the IVA. I especially like when you look in the uh, IVA cockpits and you keep seeing humorous little post-it note messages. I, I just it, it's it's irrelevant to gameplay, but it's just kind of neat. I really like that stuff. Oh, why are we why are we bobbling? Probably because I just hit a waypoint. It looks pretty nice from inside. I mean, there you are lining up with the runway fairly well. You can see it right in your little green crosshairs right there. It's a little hard to tell from that picture how far the throttle actually is. So I'm going to just kind of switch out of cockpit for a moment. Oh, that's right. I mean, uh, like that. Oh, so I'm almost near zero throttle. I hope this thing can handle this at this slow speed. Back to the in cockpit view here. Yeah, one of the pie in the sky future projects would be really nice to get the raster prop monitor terminals to work in the input in the in cockpit views. That would be really sweet. And I saw a post where he mentioned he actually had made one he'd intended to be used for KOS, and it never really went anywhere. But apparently the the, the artwork model is actually there for it. Which was I was surprised when I saw that. Comes down in. Still a bit more nose down than I'd like. Whoops. Huh. Well, it, it started to hit the abort go around, but it already landed and hit the brakes, so they kind of ignored it. Let's try a 
different ha different planes, see how well it works with... Uh, let's go to the little acrobatic ones we started with. Um, one of these little guys. Although, since I've worked on this, I've actually made the script a bit bigger. I have to do this to actually make it work. This thing out here has a uh, VDS whole cam camera on it, and I've been trying to work out ways that I can view the landings from that pole. But the difficulty is, when you're in atmosphere, you can't switch vessels. Oh, in the chat of surprise. I'm really glad when stock changed the aero model so that you can actually make airplanes that fly properly. It was so hard to do in stock aero before. You got Tarsier to have windows from other vessels. We can do a little window showing the plane going down the runway. Um, I, I'm, I don't know what Tarsier is. You'll have to tell me what Tarsier is, or I can't uh, do what you're talking about, HVAC. All right. Oh, you so you are going to do your demo today. Great. I would like to see that. Yeah, it would be nice to have cinematics of, of this from the other point of view. All right. Let's kick this off. Yeah, it would be pretty sweet if you can get the uh, the window showing things from other camera points of view to show up, because I think that would also give uh, Scott Manley what he wanted, too. Uh, what do you mean, when I have time? I don't have to use my hands on the controls. I have time now. Ah, okay, so yeah, that would be that would be exactly what we want. Yeah, definitely I want to see how that works when he tried using that HVAC, that it would look good. interesting from the in cockpit view where you can see the little aim point there in front of you as it moves and as you slowly catch up to it there it mashes up see the, 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 the 
the alignment is much smoother than it was before. I, I really like... I, I still don't think it's perfect, but it's way better than it was. This angle alignment system gets it lined up closer to on spot much sooner. if you're ready to start uh, streaming your thing, because uh, all I've really got left at this point is to keep flying this with different planes over and over again. So I'm just filling time until you're ready. If you don't think you are going to be ready, then it's important for me to know that, so I stop trying to fill time. So the same script still works pretty well on the tiny little planes, like this one. I mean, that one came down right on the right on those numbers and stopped very fast, which I'm quite happy about. 